focus on telling yourself to calm down is different from focus on the game. So we're slowing down the neutral again. I'm doing well. I know I'm winning. I just have to keep poking and stay solid. Block the second low. That's really good. He whiffs again, but I could have whiff punished to kill him, but it's okay. Just backdash. Be cool. Don't run into the magic four. But instead, eat the snake edge, and that's the game. Junior laughs at me. You can look in the bottom left. He's shaking his head. Ugh. You can't blame it all on the nerves because there are underlying thought processes going on, and solving those is actually the key to making the progress you want. Hey everyone, it's VDX. Today I'm going to take you through the saga of Choke DX. If you don't know already, I'm notorious for choking games or wins where I seem completely dominant or it seems impossible for me to lose. It's been about three years of having this problem nonstop, but I'm going to walk you through how we got past that. The problem I had is when I tried to ask other pros for help on this, they asked me a lot of like, well, what were you thinking at the time? Or, you know, what happened? And I had so much performance anxiety that my mind would literally blank out or I would have no recollection of what I was thinking. It felt like my body went into pure autopilot and despite all the training and the hours of practice, I would just do really stupid decisions nonstop. To fix this, I would go into my VODs and ask three questions. Where did my behavior change? Or what were the actions I did that were dumb? When did I abandon the game plan? The second thing I would ask is, what was I thinking that made me change that behavior? And if I couldn't remember, I would go to the third thing, which was what happened right before I made those mistakes. In other words, what triggered me to think a certain way to act in a really dumb way. And using that, I could probably reverse engineer what I was thinking and solve that. Anyways, let's jump into the games and watch this train wreck. <laughs> the first set is the season three finals of ICFC. Um, as you can see, it's a first to three set. It's 2-2 two, two, and final round. So the situation is very tense. I miss a punish right there, but I get right back to poking when he starts whiffing. I'm throwing out a lot of hitboxes, break the tackle. I'm feeling really sharp, really feeling myself throw out the reactable spear that he does not react to. Joey Fury is getting clipped nonstop and is taking so much HP damage to just little pokes. And now I'm starting to panic. I'm starting to think, okay, hold on. Like all we have to do is backdash. Don't throw away the lead. We get another nice tackle break. And this is where it starts to fall apart. I eat one big low, eat a knockdown low. And now I'm starting to sweat a bit, but it's okay. Just backdash, you know, don't panic. I'm really late. I'm throwing the forward two there. I miss the reaction on the tackle. Now I'm so stressed from the lows. I throw the hop kick. He gets the punish. I miss the reaction. And all of a sudden I lost. <laughs> it happened so fast. And in my head, that's about how hectic it was. Okay. But let's, let's break it down. We have the advantage of watching the video. Let's look at what happened again. Okay. So... Honestly, prior to that insane amount of noise and panic, I'm actually doing really well. Like if we pause the video right about here, this lead looks insurmountable. Even the commentators are shocked that I might lose this, right? So we already saw that I did a panic hop kick and that I missed the throw break, but I think there's a really important thing to pay attention to here. Right about here, after I eat the two lows, watch what I do. I completely stop poking. I completely run across the screen and I sit still. So by the time he's running at me, my reaction is way too late. My keep out attempt is just not going to work. Now, strategically, we know this is not the smartest way to play against Marduk. The weakness of Marduk is that he needs to take time to set up his medium speed counter hits, to set up his throw mix ups, to get into the tackle stance, right? So if you're controlling him with these quick mid pokes, these jabs, and you're being really sharp on the breaks, it's actually hard for him to find an opening. So staying at a medium high tempo and trying to keep him under control with my hitboxes which is something noctis is really good at would have been the correct strategy however because i was so afraid of losing and because i was so panicky and just thinking oh just you know don't whiff don't get counter hit i just backdash and i give up all of that control and that's what lets him begin setting up the snowball first with the tackle and then right after here i just start making mistakes left and right so not only did I make a strategically dumb decision against Marduk, I actually just started throwing away the game once I was panicking. But it was a completely won game. So I looked at what triggered that, and it's the big HP lead that I had. I got real nervous about keeping that. It was on match point. I really didn't want to lose. And after eating those two lows, I felt like the world was crumbling, even though it was honestly fine. <laughs> that was problem number one. I froze completely, and I just com stopped pressuring him, stopped doing any kind of offense, and that just let him start running me over, hit a few lows, and then I started panicking. It was a disaster. This next set is almost identical to the previous one, so it's a final round situation against Joey Fury's Marduk. Now we just talked about how 
keeping the poking tempo up is actually in Noctis's favor, right? Even though Marduk does have counter hit tools, my ability to poke quickly and with big coverage makes it difficult for him to sneak through and get a counter hit. It's also harder for him to get his throws started and things like that if I'm staying in his face. But of course, look at what happens when I get nervous. Counter hit. <laughs> he lands the throw. I guess wrong on the throw mix up and he puts me in the air again. Now he gets a combo into the rage drive and I have to guess one more time. I guess wrong. And now I'm dead. Now, now let's back it up. Even though that looked like a total robbery, there is a distinct decision point where I abandoned the strategy. And that's what we want to look at. How did Marduk even get the opportunity to make that comeback in the first place? Let's watch again. I'm pressing him with pokes, hit him with the string extension, put him to the wall. This is just all completely good. So I'm going to fast forward to the situation right before it all went wrong. I put him in the corner. Miss a throw. For some reason, I thought that was a good idea. Throw a 2-2. Stop the extension early because I don't want to die. And here's where it all goes wrong. Three back dashes into another mid poke. And I chose one of my slowest mid pokes possible. Now, why would I ever do that? What was the thought process behind that decision? Well, I would back dash away because I don't want to get counter hit or grabbed, right? Ironically, I got counter hit. <laughs> But also, why not just take my offense here? I have him in the corner, you know, he can't back up, so obviously I can't whiff. What was I thinking? Why didn't I just kill him? Well, looking back, I was too afraid to do a low. I didn't want to get low parried, and I didn't want to get my demo man blocked, right? So I thought that if I just backdashed, maybe I could create space, slow down, and then get a poke in again. But of course, that's where he found his window. So that brief moment of freezing and not being willing to keep up the pressure and stick with the good game plan, ended up being my complete downfall. So these two sets show a common problem where when I get a big health lead and it's match point and the stakes are high, I freeze because I don't want to throw away the game. I don't want to make that mistake that costs me everything. I don't want to get counter hit. I don't want to whiff. I just want that to back up and let them make a mistake so I can just finish them in peace, right? But that's fundamentally not believing in my offense, right? So initially it would be so easy to think, oh, I just got nervous, so I froze. But it's important to go deeper. And what really is the core of that mistake is that I don't believe in my offense. I don't believe in taking that final mix up or keeping them down with hitboxes because I'm afraid of getting robbed, either by rage art or by a counter hit or just by whiffing. But the thing is, look at how successful it was before. Look at how much HP I'm getting just by sticking to that default game plan. Now it's not strategically a bad idea to just calm down and not get robbed, but at the same time, completely unplugging my controller and just running away is also not the solution. So I realized after making this mistake over and over again for years that I needed to keep the offensive pressure up to believe in my offense. And while I'm still playing around not getting robbed, there is a middle ground between chilling out and slowing down the offense versus doing literally nothing. So mentally, I had kind of solved the first problem, which was that I would freeze in situations where I had a gigantic lead. But it turns out there were many other problems I had to deal with with my nerves. So this next set is a few months later. It's at Combo Breaker. I'm playing against Shadow20Z offline. We had obviously played a bunch before in ICFCs, but playing offline is a whole different beast. You got a lot of noise. You got to play on systems that have different latency. So it's a, it's a big test of your ability to be resilient and stay, stay cool. You can see this is game two. I actually lost game one three rounds straight, but uh, I was pretty confident uh, in my ability to make adaptations and things like that. So even though I was super nervous and not really thinking really well, I actually did pretty okay. So one problem in the first set was that every time he went into Tarantula Stance as Zafina, I was floating it incorrectly and I was getting the wrong read. So you'll actually see here that he goes into Rage Drive, he's going to go into Tarantula again, but this time I make the adaptation, do the proper flow and I get a kill off of that. Sick. Nice win. So now it's final round. I'm playing against Shadow20Z, one of the best North American players that we have. Clearly. If I just keep doing what I'm doing or keep it simple, I can win. You know, I'm winning the poke battle, things like that. But no, no. Choke DX has some other things to say. I land this beautiful one-two float, get out of the corner and put him to the wall. This is super good. Keep it solid. Not sure why you're doing wall standing 2-2. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Now he gets a big punish and you're low, but it's okay, be cool. Now I get a beautiful sidewalk right into a combo. Okay, so this is actually really good. Is he gonna be able to keep the clutch up? going for a roll slide, giving up the wall position, and getting poked to death. Now, this makes no sense for many reasons. Look at the situation here. If I go for the slide and it works, say for example it works, my back is now to the wall, 
he can wall break me and kill me and i don't even kill him for that now the reason i did it was because in my head i was so focused on oh my god it's shadow 20z he's gonna adapt i need to end the round i got really lucky on those last two plays he's probably gonna be expecting the wall bounce right so let me go for the low it was a really dumb decision but it was all built on the fact that i thought i got lucky i thought i needed to end before he makes adaptations right so that reveals like a fundamental lack of trust in my ability to outplay and after that it's just completely ugly right i run into multiple counter hits he starts poking me down with a bunch of lows because i start freezing i start flailing for a bit more pokes back but it really just doesn't add up all of that and my brain of course is completely on why did i do that slide i just had to keep it together there was no reason to force that completely out of the moment of the game like it looks like i'm doing these offensive movements and look like i'm trying to bait whiffs and things like that but my mind is completely gone you know he blocks the low i force a sidestep into his homing move and then it's ugly the last round is really nothing too exceptional it's going to look very similar eating some low pokes you know refusing to block low input error here is an absolute disaster i just take monster damage and then i swing into his string extension like he can tell i'm panicking he can tell i'm sweating and then it becomes really obvious on how to beat me so i did manage to stop freezing but in exchange, I started throwing my life away nonstop. As you can see, like I'm able to actually play, I'm able to actually poke, but I didn't believe that. So anytime I got a lead or made a big play, I would just go for something super dumb like that slide. Here's another set where that same panic will become really obvious, okay? But it even has some elements of the freezing. It's a really interesting set for that reason. So this is the regional finals of the Tekken Online Challenge. So even though it was an online challenge, we actually met offline to play. So here I'm playing against Junior 20Z. Uh, it's one to one, so final game situation. And here I start making some crazy outplays. Beautiful backdash whiff punish. That is one of my favorite things to do, and to actually execute it like on the big stage offline felt super good. Catch him not breaking throws. Now I'm super excited. Like dang, again I feel like I got super lucky. I made a couple outplays, but we gotta just end this. Gotta get it out of here now, right? Now, also notice that I'm on player two, so I'm really uncomfortable. So these, the ability to control these thoughts is even lower. I'm thinking, oh man, I'm on player two. Like something's going to go wrong. I just got to kill him. Big counter hit is exactly what look, we're looking for here. Unconventional wall Oki, but he gets clipped by the down four two. And this conversion is so good. I need to try to figure out to land that conversion again. But I dropped the combo. Now I'm a little sweating. He blocks the low. Oh my goodness, he hits the snake edge. <laughs> I am so sad that that snake edge hit and now I'm super panicking I go for the rage art because I don't want to defend but I didn't pay attention to that I had one pixel of health I rip is screaming final final round and here it's already a disaster I'm just thinking about how I ate that snake edge how the rage art was really dumb how I could have finished the combo to kill him and then I start playing out of frame I do a 2-2 which is minus 9 and he lands the magic 4 I don't have frames to do anything I'm supposed to just chill here I do a parry in desperation and it just doesn't work out. This is all completely ugly. So not only did I stop making the really good plays that I was making before, I was panicking, I was swinging into things, my offense stopped being tight. You saw that I went from making the crazy whiff punish before into just completely flailing and it looked so ugly now even though my actions were pretty panicky like doing rage art without enough hp or mashing into the magic four or just spamming parry and dying there's a key common theme that you'll see among the thoughts here look at what happened i dropped the combo okay he blocked my down three which led me to miss the snake edge okay i should have reacted to that snake edge that rage art was really dumb all of these thoughts are moments in the past right and you can see how each one directly cascades into the next mistake all right look at this sick combo sick float right oh no i dropped the combo he should be dead okay i do a desperation parry there too i didn't even see that okay down three is blocked oh no he blocked my down three what do i do now i need to adjust my timing oh my god i you know i ate the snake edge it's just one thing after another that's on my mind man i practice that snake edge i practice against katarina this is my most practice against character i eat the rage drive i should have sidestepped that right now i'm gonna rage art because i'm just afraid of taking the mix up funny camera was cool but it was a dumb decision right so this reveals the next problem that the next matches show that problem is obsessing over mistakes and this one if we're going to be real is kind of the root of the previous two which were freezing and panicking 
I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. It's going to be painfully clear when we track my thoughts alongside the match. Here's an ICFC match once again against Shadow 20Z. We're in a match point situation, but it's not actually even that bad. I'm up a game, okay? Look here, right from the start, I'm feeling super good. Forward dash, back dash, down forward two, whiff punish. I read that he wanted to counter hit me, baited it with my movement, and got a sick combo. Here we're at the wall. He guesses incorrectly, you know, ducking and eating the mid. Now I'm putting him in a last mix-up situation. I run up and do the low, but I don't finish the demo man. And listen to me right here, listen. Uh, if I finish the demo man, he dies. Now look, look at the time gap between when I said that and when it actually happened. At 46 seconds, I didn't do the demo man. About 9 to 10 seconds later, I eat the rage drive and I'm still thinking uh, about if it. If I finish the demo man, he dies. Right? Now I missed the punish on the sweep. Why? Because I was thinking about the demo man from before. I'm pissed, obviously, about missing that punish. But now I'm telling myself, you know what? Calm down. You know, the game's not over. You, you got to chill. I don't know what happened there. But, you know, man, damn, you should have finished that demo, man. You, you know, it didn't even matter. You didn't need the wall splat, right? I whiff the two, which is really scary. He whiff punishes my second two. Now I'm panicking again. Wow. I did block the snake edge, though. I'm late on the punish. Come on, dude. And then I lose that round, right? One mistake went directly into the other each time. I wrote down my thoughts here. Let's follow along. I'm going to replay it back one more time, and you can see how much of it is just completely irrelevant. Right? I'm popping off a little bit because I got that sick read into the good play. Now, the reason I don't do the demo man is usually it can sometimes wall splat. Okay? So usually I get a better combo. But here it didn't matter. Right? I'm thinking I should have finished it. Eat the rage drive. I'm still thinking about the demo man. Thought about how it should have wall splat. Thought about that HP didn't matter. And by then I missed the punish. Right? So I was slow on that punish. I'm freaking out about that. Calm down, whatever. Here, like, we're just kind of moving around. I don't want to make a mistake. I do whiff two twice, which is terrifying. And that miss punish totally sends me off the brink, right? So this one is a bit more obvious, but tracking it point by point makes it a, makes it really even like crystal clear like what was going wrong right missed win on the demo man missed win on the scarecrow sweep missed win on the snake edge right obsessing over the past moment cost me the future moment so this is really crucial i'm going to show you another example of how bad this can really be now here is a tournament from about a month ago i'm playing against junior 20z once again at oktoberfest and this is a great example of not obsessing over your previous mistakes because it will cost you so much, okay? So you can see here I'm backdashing. I'm kind of frozen, but I still break the throw. So I'm still decently aware, right? I'm poking, I'm poking, I'm poking. Obviously nerves are really high. I'm in Atlanta. The crowd is really loud. Down jab is successful. Just one more hit. I just need one more hit, okay? And I miss the reaction on the low. Now, sometimes that happens, right? You, you get a little tense. Your focus is a little off, you know? That happens, but... It's really important to let that go as soon as you can. Now, you guys saw what happened before. Remember the last time I missed a launch punishable low reaction? I ended up losing an entire set, right? That cost me the whole thing. And all of these moments I'm remembering really clearly. And that lack of focus is going to end up being a serious problem. So, moving on to game three here, I skipped ahead a little bit because the key moments come after a lot of movement and poking. And you can see that I already have the health lead. So I wonder what's going to happen when I'm super nervous and thinking about my mistake from literally a year ago. Poking with some 2-2, runs straight into the snake edge once again. I think you can see me visually react. Look in the bottom right corner here. Little like a head tilt, not happy with that, but it's okay, I'm trying to shake it off. At this point, I can tell I'm nervous, right? My heart rate is high. I have the mask on. It's hard to breathe. So I'm telling myself, just breathe. Stay calm. You know, be cool. Like, you can't worry about that. And that's where my head is. And that's a key factor because I said, you know, don't obsess over your past mistakes. But I was just telling myself to breathe, you know. And, and, and even though that's important, it's important to calm down. I wasn't actually focused on the screen in front of me as much as I needed to be. I was more focused on telling myself to calm down. So I get this round, which is a really big deal, but again, focus on telling yourself to calm down is different from focus on the game. So I got a nice little like movement there, but I didn't get the punish I needed. And all of this stuff is starting to weigh on me, right? Remember, I lost to him a year ago on a bad reaction. 
there's and with all these people around i'm having this anxiety of like oh my goodness i need to not make the mistake again you know i'm supposed to know this matchup like i lab this non-stop there are all of these thoughts that have nothing to do with the game in front of me okay nail the oki here the micro backdash just to get that whiff punish was really, really sick. But now you can see that the neutral is slowing down, right? I'm just thinking again, oh man, you hit me with the snake edge before. I got to keep looking for that, you know, stay cool. I get the sidestep right, but I pick the wrong whiff punish and I end up not killing him. So now I'm really sweating. He should be dead. And as soon as I think he should be dead, I run into the magic four. That specific setup is actually really common. I've actually trained myself in practice mode over and over again to not mash after that or be ready to duck. But because my mind was on the mistake before, the snake edge from the round before, the snake edge from the year before, the harrier three from the game before, I got hit and died. So obviously I'm trying to calm myself down again. I'm telling myself to breathe, but you're going to see quickly that that isn't quite enough. You missed the whiff punish. That would end the game or end the round, right? So like there's a whirlwind of thoughts. There's a lot of nerves, but the focus has to stay in the game, okay? Even if you're telling yourself to calm down, that is a distracting thought. You know, it's helpful. It's going to get you back to where you need to be. But it's a distracting thought. So we're slowing down the neutral again. I'm doing well. I know I'm winning. I just have to keep poking and stay solid. Block the second low. That's really good. He whiffs again, but I could have whiff punished to kill him, but it's okay. Just backdash. Be cool. Don't run into the magic four. But instead, eat the snake edge, and that's the game. Junior laughs at me. You can look in the bottom left. He's shaking his head. Ugh. So, what do we have to take from this? Well, I thought each step of the way that I had conquered some of my nerves before. You know, against Joey, I was freezing, or I was, you know, abandoning the game plan, so stick with it, right? Don't panic. You know, be confident in your offense. But then I play against Shadow, and I go for the slide at the wall. And that came after making successful plays, right? So clearly I'm still not too confident in my offense. Even though I'm not freezing, I'm still doing too much, panicking, abandoning the game plan, not playing solid. Same thing happened here against Junior. You know, this match is from before, but you know, I made a few good plays and then lost confidence in those plays. And all of a sudden I panic, stop reacting and die, okay? So even though I beat the panic and the freezing somewhat, it's clear that my obsession over the previous mistakes, and this is just the most iconic example of it, dwelling in the past about a mistake just closes you off to the ability to continue making plays. You know, your brain has to move on. There's so many movements and attacks happening in the moment that if as soon as you like lose focus and think back or something like that, you end up missing another opportunity. That match is a great example, and obviously, eating two snake edges in the same game is kind of just the peak of that. You know, you cannot dwell on your past mistakes. So, I did a little analysis. Again, we went through the order of what was the action, what, what was I thinking during that, and what events triggered that thought, right? And a brief analysis is why was I freezing? Well, turns out when there's a big crowd or everybody's watching me, I'm afraid of like, oh, they're going to think I don't know the matchup, right? Also, I don't want to throw away the game and hey, I'm pretty good at backdashing, you know, so why don't I just back up and not do anything and let them mess up? Well, it turns out some matchups, it's still better to, you know, keep the hitboxes going kind of like Marduk so that they can't set up their strengths, right? So strategically, it's okay to just backdash, but you can't do it passively. You have to continue reacting, you know, continue being sharp, stay focused on it instead of backdashing and thinking about, oh, I don't want to mess up. You know, that would be terrible. We saw that panicking was an issue where I was in the lead. I made like solid plays. I got a, you know, ahead with a whiff punish or something like that. So I would have to force a kill attempt or I'd be slightly behind and I'd start flailing for return damage. All of that just shows like a low offensive confidence. I'm just so convinced that I got lucky or that, you know, there's no way they will mess up again. I should just kill them, get to the next game and see what happens, right? I don't want to keep this game going because I'm going to choke if that happens. But you can't think like that. You know, looking back two seconds ago, I was out playing him just fine. I got him this low, just doing regular things, you know, like, you know, just poking on different timings, spacing out his moves. Sure, I missed a few whiff punishes, but it's still an effective thing that was working. Why would that suddenly disappear? So having confidence in your offense is a big deal. Otherwise, you'll just back up, run away, give up all the pressure, and then something might happen. But again, the crux of all of it is you cannot obsess over previous mistakes. 
because you're giving up potential future opportunities every time you dwell on a previous one. That moment is gone, right? You cannot think about that anymore. Now, obviously, that is all way easier said than done, right? The best example is in the junior match. I was telling myself to calm down. I was telling myself, keep breathing, but my mind kept drifting. I kept worrying about things that didn't matter. You know, they're going to think I don't know the matchup. Oh my goodness, I should have blocked this before. You know, I practiced this. All of that is taking your mind away, okay? I was so quick to always blame that on nerves. But after great conversations with some pro players, I talked to Speed Kicks, I talked to Joey Fury, we figured out it's not just nerves. Nerves are kind of a scapegoat. You know, you can't blame it all on the nerves because there are underlying thought processes going on and solving those is actually the key to making the progress you want. So I know we just spent a bunch of time just watching me lose, but I promise this is for a purpose. I wanted to show you that I have a consistent history of playing super awfully. But recently, I was able to find some big wins just from the ability to keep my focus on the game, let go of those irrelevant thoughts, and continue to make plays and outplays. So that's going to be in the next video. We're going to talk about how you counter your nerves, how you build up the focus you want, and how to maintain the clutch in situations where it all looks like it's going wrong or in situations where you're way ahead and you know there's no way you can lose. How do you keep that intensity up? How do you keep that focus up? We'll cover that in the next video. Thanks for spending so much of your day watching me choke games that I should have won. I promise it's for a higher purpose. So see you in the next video. Peace.